Recently, me and my parents went out for a pizza, but when we came back home, we realized all of us forgot our keys. We were desperate as there was no way to enter the house other than, say, breaking a window. But my father didn't want to do that because it really hurted his heart. So we had to call, guess who? The fireman. Yes, I don't know in other countries, but in Italy, they actually offer help even to people stuck outside of their houses. But we had to wait like a couple of hours because our call was not in their priorities, of course. Anyway, since we all have a tendency to forget stuff, I wanted to create something that will help avoid this shit happening again. After tinkering a little bit, I came out with a solution that takes advantage of the power of a Raspberry Pi and that lets you open your electric gate with your smartphone. Alright, let me point out that this is not going to be a tutorial, since all of the things I did are well documented on the web and even on YouTube, and I'm just using the knowledge I acquired by watching other YouTubers' tutorials and reading about what I needed for my project. As usual, I'm just telling you about my experience, uh, this time as a Raspberry Pi first-timer, and presenting you my idea, which is actually very simple at the end of the day. So, I chose a Raspberry Pi 3 for this project, which is actually overkill, but I'm planning to use it even for future projects. I ordered my unit on Amazon alongside other things. So after unboxing it, I just inserted a pre-prepared microSD card with Raspbian installed on it, and the process is very well documented on the Raspberry Pi site. Now, you need to connect a mouse and a keyboard to your Raspberry Pi and your Raspberry Pi to an HDMI device, at least the first time you boot it up. And I'm just using my TV here. It boots up, resizes the file system and reboots. Then, I connected to the Wi-Fi, set a static IP and enabled SSH and VSC that will allow me to remotely connect to the Pi so I won't need the external monitor anymore. I set a static IP for the Ethernet device too, because for this project I plan on using it with a wired connection, so I don't have to deal with range issues and other Wi-Fi related stuff. For the hardware setup, I took a spare remote for my gate, disassembled it and soldered two thin wires that I salvaged from an old telephone cable by the way, to the switch that opens the gate when pressed. This way, every time these wires will touch, it will be like pushing the actual switch, and the gate will open. In order for the Pi to actually push the switch for me, I used the relay module, which will be wired to the GPIO pins of the Pi board. As usual, two for the 5 volts and ground, and one for the signal. Then I connected the wires coming from the remote to the normally off side of the relay, so that they will be safely connected only when the Pi turns the relay on. Okay, everything is ready, time to connect to the Pi via SSH or VNC. Here I'm on Windows, just to show that this method of connection is universal and everyone can do it. I mean, you can even connect from your iPad or your phone. After updating the APT repositories, I installed Apache and PHP that we will later be needed to set up the web server that will allow me to remotely connect to the Pi. I also installed from Git this little piece of software called Wiring Pi. This allows you to control your GPIO pins from the console without root, and this is important for our PHP web page to send comments to the GPIO pins via the system console. So, after setting the pin I used for the signal wire to output mode, I could activate and deactivate the relay from the console by just changing the pin state. Great! Oh, and by the way, you may have noticed that I'm using another relay board in this scene, and this is because the previous one was actually an Arduino board that didn't work with the Raspberry Pi because it needs 5 volts on the signal wire, while the Pi only outputs a 3.3 volt signal. Alright, so it's time to build a web interface now, and I'm just using a button that calls a PHP function that calls a system command, so I just need to pass the wiring Pi commands to this function. Here I'm making sure that every time the button is pushed, the web page will set the GPIO pin to output mode, activate the relay, sleep a couple of seconds so that the remote button will stay pushed in order for the gate to receive the RF signal, 
and finally it will deactivate the relay. Now I needed to add a password to my Apache server, otherwise anyone knowing my IP could open my gate. Ok, after setting everything up, I made a quick test by connecting to my Pi web server on the local network. And now I can stop here because my Wi-Fi signal is actually reachable from the outside of the house, even if it is weak, but it would be enough to trigger the whole mechanism. But I want you to be able to open my gate remotely. Say my father calls me uh, saying he forgot the keys, I can open the gate for him. To do that, I needed a dynamic DNS service. And a dynamic DNS service is a service that lets you create an account and gives you some data you then have to insert into your router configuration so that every time your router reboots, it sends its IP address to the dynamic DNS service and you can connect remotely using a fixed address. And this is necessary because with IPv4, every time your router reboots, your ISP will assign to it a different IP address. And that's just how IPv4 works, otherwise I could just take note of my IP address and use it. Anyway, after registering on noip.org, which is a free dynamic DNS service, I set my router according to their configuration, and now all that was left to do was setting port forwarding. And this is another important step, because every time we access from the internet to our IP address, we need a modem to know where on the local network redirect our connection. So I just set my modem to redirect incoming connections from a chosen external port to my Raspberry Pi local IP address at the local port used by the Apache web server installed on the Raspberry Pi. I was now able to connect to my Raspberry Pi from my phone through the internet. So, the project is now complete, I just added a little 3D printed case for my Raspberry Pi and even a small heatsink that will help dissipate the heat because the Pi will be always on and I just need maybe to find a smaller breadboard because this is actually huge but you know, this was uh, what I had lying around and I really hope you liked my idea and if so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to help a smaller YouTuber like me. Thank you so much for watching and see you very soon. Ciao!